All right, gang, I am uh, off to the movies, and, uh, like, why am I wearing my sunglasses today? It is like a dark, dreary, overcast day. There, that makes more sense. I was having a kind of a Corey Hart moment there for a second. And if you can get that uh, Corey Hart reference, you are definitely Canadian. <laughs> Okay, now that that's out of the way, uh, I am on my way to go see the single most important and requested movie sequel, I would argue, in an entire generation. And of course, I am talking about Mechanic Resurrection. That's right. The sequel to 2011's The Mechanic. A sequel that people have been clamoring for for five years. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let's just get this over with. You know, uh, Corey Hart is a pretty cool dude. I wear my sunglasses at night. You know what is not cool? <laughs> Mechanic resurrection. No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, so right out of the gate, this movie commits, in my opinion, a silly cinematic sin, and it uses the word resurrection in its title. Because first of all, when I think of the term resurrection for movie titles, it makes me instantly think back to Alien Resurrection, which was categorically the worst of the uh, Alien films. And not only am I thinking about an absolutely shitty Alien film while watching Mechanic Resurrection, I'm also really strongly thinking about how totally worthless this movie is. So it's like a double whammy effect. Double whammy. I should preface this review by saying that uh, I, I saw Mechanic Resurrection for free, so in in some ways I guess I shouldn't be complaining, but on the other hand, uh, considering that I paid zero dollars to see this movie, uh, I think I kind of overpaid. I will, I will say this in defense of Jason Statham. I have been a pretty staunch Jason Statham apologist and defender uh, for many years. I mean, I, I think I was one of the very few critics that gave positive reviews to not only the first Transporter film, but the two subsequent sequel films as well. We don't count the Transporter refueled, that uh, completely unnecessary non-Jason Statham Transporter uh, sequel. That, that, that just doesn't count. No, no. Mm -mm. Um, but even like I have to come out and say that Jason Statham has sort of unfortunately emerged almost more of like a product and brand than he is like an actor now it's like he's just perpetuating the Jason Statham brand I mean Statham I'll give him credit he's tried I mean last year in Spy he really helped to sort of lampoon his steely-eyed uh, tough guy image in these films and I thought he was spectacular I thought he was one of the funniest elements of that film he needs to do more films like that and less films like Mechanic Resurrection and I'm, I'm struggling to kind of figure out how, how did this movie get made like there was there was no built-in audience for the first film and you know what I have a rough idea how Hollywood math works when it comes to like green lighting sequels and how movies are actually profitable and the first film which was directed by Simon West uh, who did Con Air that film cost 40 million dollars and it grossed 60 million worldwide that is barely profitable in this day and age so I don't know how this film even got bankrolled for a sequel considering the fact that the first one wasn't even that popular I counted eight executive producers for this film and somehow 
through some miracle of financial ingenuity, they managed to pull together some money to make this sequel that no one wanted. For those that are really unfamiliar with the world of the mechanic, it's the first mechanic from 2011 was a remake of a Charles Bronson film, and uh, Statham plays this guy named uh, Arthur Bishop, who is a super lethal and dexterous assassin for hire. It makes the uh, the uh, assassinations look like accidents. So he is a genius at what he does. So in the sequel, he sort of has gone into hiding in Rio de Janeiro, and if there's one really good thing I will say about the Mechanic Resurrection, the establishing shots of Rio and then later Bangkok in the film, yeah, they're they're pretty gorgeous. I gotta say, they look pretty good. The rest of this film, no. No, no, mm -mm. So he's in hiding in Rio and he gets uh, embroiled in this relationship with uh, a character played by Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba's inclusion in this film is baffling. I mean, she's come out on record lately uh, to criticize her past film choices and which really is just head scratching when you consider what made her think that this was a worthwhile role. She is essentially playing a helpless victim slash damsel in distress that any female actress could have played. It is a deeply regressive role for an actress of the stature of Jessica Alba. Bishop! Anywho, she has this relationship with Statham. Statham and Alba have absolutely zero chemistry whatsoever in this film. So she basically gets kidnapped and the kidnapper, like one of the most dull villains in recent action film history, conspires to lure uh, Bishop out of hiding and basically forces him to commit three uh, high value target assassinations. And if he completes them, he will get the love of his life back. The principal I represent has an offer for you. Each death must look like an accident. I'm waiting too long to get even with you. You have 36 hours to eliminate all the targets on this list. Or they will eliminate me. They're like, why does he care about Jessica Alba? They have no chemistry. You don't get a sense that there's a loving bond between the characters. It just makes no sense why he would even want to risk his life to save this person, that's pretty inconsequential to him. But the reason he does it is because the screenplay demands that he does it. And that's sloppy writing. And this film just has really just lackluster writing all through it. It just, it never feels plausible. You know, there's also, uh, some of the action sequences inspired a lot of chuckling. Like there's one sequence where, and without getting into reasons how he got there, Jason Statham is breaking out of a Bangkok prison. Before he escapes, he rubs, uh, shark repellent cream all over his body and then he jumps through the hole in the wall into the ocean and of course we get a, a really bad cgi shot of a shark uh, ignoring jason statham and i'm kind of like this is so strangely funny and albeit very familiar hand me down the shark repellent back spray that this film takes itself so bloody seriously. It doesn't even understand the inherent value of dumb moments like that in the film uh, for comedic effect. And there's other like weird things in some of the action sequences where he uses like a human body as a shield um, from a grenade blast and the body that he's using as a shield, he pulls the pin from the grenade and the grenade explodes in front of the body and destroys all of his enemies in front of him yet somehow Statham behind the human shield is protected. And last I checked, that's not how grenades work and how blast radius work. No, no, hell no. There's also more moronic action sequences. Like, I mean, there's a scene on board a boat where like Statham has like a pistol with like a ridiculous amount of unlimited rounds at his disposal. I, I think I counted him re like reloading it like once during his entire melee where he's like taking out dozens upon dozens of people like that's not how pistols work in movies no 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 then there's this really idiotic scene where the villain uh plants a detonator on the boat hoping to like ex like blow up jason statham's character they're relentless aren't they oh, so am I. and uh, you get a big shot of a digital readout that says it's going to go off in three minutes and then 30 seconds after we have that shot we have this uh 
moment where the character, the villain goes out of his way to say, we must leave the boat. It's going to explode in three minutes. Well, no shit, Sherlock. We just got the shot of the digital timer. And that's how little respect the makers of Mechanic Resurrection have for the basic intelligence spans and attention spans of its viewers. The action in this film is just, it's so choppy and chaotic and it's so frustratingly shot with so many close-ups and it's just, the editing work is, is, is a hatchet job. Some of the visual effects on this film, beyond mediocre, there's a sequence where uh, Statham has to scale a high rise and plant an explosive device uh, on a, a pool that sort of hangs over the roof of the skyscraper and I mean, this film contains some of the most shoddy green screen work I've seen from a mainstream Hollywood film in an awfully long time. I lost interest in this film like 15 minutes in. It was, it was just dead on arrival. It is a film on such methodical autopilot that you start to question whether or not human beings were actually involved in the production. And then, like, to add insult to injury, Tommy Lee Jones shows up in what essentially is a five-minute cameo, and you start to really question, why is an actor of his stature signing on to do films like Criminal uh, from earlier this year, and now The Mechanic? Is he desperate for money? Does he need work? I don't think so. He's an Academy Award-winning actor. There's no sign of the intruder, Mr. Adams. That's because he's sitting right in front of me here in the safe room, Jack Off. What do you have in mind? You'll have to die. <laughs> it's just, it's a wasteful, redundant, completely forgettable and utterly disposable action film that, that I know for a fact I won't even think about two hours after I post this review. So it is uh, completely skippable on so many fundamental levels. So there you have it. There is my enthusiastic review. No! No! I refuse! No! For Mechanic Resurrection, let me know in the comments what you thought of uh, this film. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite Jason Statham films are. And like I said, I'm a fan of the Statham. There's a lot of films that he's done that I like. This one ain't it. Uh, please don't forget to like this video. Also, if you could subscribe to my channel, I would sincerely appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at a better movie, everybody. Thank you.